I think you moved your camera where we can't see. All right, hi everyone. Um, we're gonna give it a couple of minutes to let people join the webinar in the Facebook Live. And then we'll start with Mr. Joel Pendervis on um, financial statements. So we'll just wait for a couple of minutes to start the presentation. Thank you. That didn't help at all. Okay, we're going to get started. Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome, everyone, to our third installment um, part of our webinar series, Welcome or Open, a webinar series for small business fundamentals. My name is Daisy Munoz. I'm the Capital Access Manager for Progress OKC. Progress OKC is a community development corporation dedicated to advancing social and economic opportunity, opportunities in Oklahoma City through home ownership, business ownership, and quality of place efforts. Our mission is to straighten and preserve the social and economic fabric of Oklahoma City's underserved neighborhoods. Today, we'll be learning from Joel Pendervis, founder of JP Accounting. Joel specializes in tax preparation, business accounting, bookkeeping, business, and management consulting. Welcome, Joel. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing just fine, Daisy, and I'd like to say hello to everyone that's in the feed. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Friday. Um, yes, we will ask if you can uh, shift your camera a little bit up to your face. Right now, we are seeing your beard. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Right. Yeah, throughout the um, throughout the presentation, if you don't mind, just let me know if my camera gets out of focus or and just, just go ahead and let me know. Um, yes, sir. All right. Mm -hmm. So you want me to go ahead and get started or? Yes, so you can share your screen and we can start the presentation on financial statements. All right. Okay, uh, as Daisy said, my name is Joel Pendarvis. Uh, I am a uh, CPA here in Oklahoma City. And I do specialize in all the things she said, taxes and financial statements. Uh, so what we're gonna be doing now, I tried to make a very uh, broad overview 
of the topic at hand. Um, some of you, it may be new for some of you, and for some of you, it might be um, uh, just root, a little bit too elementary. If that is the case, uh, feel free to ask more in-depth questions at the end, or or if there's anything that you do not understand, uh, please ask. You know, please ask questions. The purpose of this thing is for people to know and understand. Um, so, so uh, we're gonna start out the presentation by asking a question: uh, financial statements and why do you need them? Um, in the first place, uh, let's see here. The main thing is for you as a business owner, uh, the reason why you want financial statements is um, the financial statements actually tell you how, how your business is doing. Um, it tells you which products and services are profitable and which are not. It can also show you how much you are spending on certain goods and services. Uh, Cause a business, and even though a business purpose is to make money, buying and selling or mainly selling things uh it's, it's also a consumer uh, businesses have to buy things such as equipment labor uh, supplies and you need to know how much you're actually spending on those items and how much you're spending and what you're spending it on so your financial statements can tell you succinctly uh, how much you're spending on certain items uh it also uh ideally it can tell you your financial statements statements will tell you how much cash you have on hand uh, to make needed purchases, such as equipment, supplies, and other services. Um, you, you, you really, as a business owner, you really don't want to be in a position to where if you want to purchase supplies or equipment, um, that you, you know, you log on to chase.com and you look at your checking account. And then you make the purchase and you pray to God after you make the purchase because you don't know if everything is in or not. So ideally you would want a, a set of updated financial statements to tell you whether you can make those much needed purchases for equipment and supplies. So you can't carry on your business. Um, also for um, financial statements, what it will do just for you as an individual business owner is it lets you know if you're meeting your financial goals. Um, is your company, you know, is it growing in cash flow and profitability? You, you do want to know these things. Um, well, because you just want to know you're in business. You want to know if you need to grow, what items you need to cut off, uh, cut out of your, uh, cut out of your business. Um, also, it, it lets you know like what type of items you might need more of. Um, and plus, you just want to know like how well you're progressing. It, like when you. Most people, when you enter into a business, you have a goal in mind. You have an idea in your, in your mind about where you want to be in three to five or 10 years. Your financial statements can help you um, understand where you are in the process of your own personal goals for that business. It may just be to take care of your family. It may be to just be like a mega millionaire. Your financial statements will help you determine like where you are in that process. And, uh, and also things such as Financial statements can help you determine whether you need credit or not. Um, basically, what I'm alluding to at a personal level, uh, at a, not a personal level, but at an individual business level, why you need financial statements for yourself. Because here's the thing, most of us, uh, most business people, um, most of them aren't going to have a set of financial statements unless someone makes them get a, a set of financial statements, such as a bank, or they have to do their taxes. That's what most people bother with it. But um, so what I was doing was listing reasons why you yourself, when you get a business, why you should actually on your own have these financial statements. Um, and then what I'm alluding to is this last sentence here. In other words, financial statements can aid you in the decision-making process as a business. So if you're looking at your profit and loss, and we'll talk about that later. If you're looking at your profit and loss statement or your earning statement, and you see like a big fat negative at the end of net income, well, I mean, we can get, get through that, you know, it can, it helps you determine like, if you see that negative, you're sort of forced to decide, okay, um, what services are we gonna uh, have more of? What services are we gonna have went less of? What vendors are we gonna use to, as our supplies, as we're trying to sell different products? Um, is the rent too high in this place? Is it, are we in a bad location? Things like that. So when you look at those uh, financial statements, 
the, those are those are the decisions that it helps you make as a business person. Um, and so that's why you will need them uh, just before someone asks for them. And when I say someone, I mean like, you know, banks, federal government, investors. Yeah, you should always have like a set of financial statements on hand or even if they're not on hand to be able to, to quickly be in a position where you can make a set of financial statements. Um, are we all clear on that? Does anyone have any questions about that so far? Are they allowed to ask questions, Daisy, or is that toward the end? They can ask questions throughout, yes. Okay. Okay, so I will move on uh, to um, the different types of financial statements. There's three main types. There's the income statement, and just to get you guys used to the jargon so you won't be intimidated when you're talking with certain people. It's, uh, Basically, it's a, uh, it's a statement of income and expense, or they call it an income statement. They call it a profit and loss statement or an earning statement. It's all the same thing. Basically, what, they wanna, what they're asking is, um, how much money does your business make and how much does it spend? And what do you have left over after you make the money or make the revenue and spend it? Um, that's basically it in a nutshell. Uh, all these are just accounting terms that people use to describe these various types of earnings or financial or profit and loss statements. So don't, don't be intimidated by the jargon, just know what they mean. Um, then there's the balance sheet. Um, the balance sheet essentially, and we'll, we'll get into more detail about that a little bit later, and the statement of cash flows. All right. Okay, so the income statement or profit and loss, they call it, a lot of people just call it P&L. Um, that's what we do in America. We abbreviate things, so they call it a PNL. Um, essentially, what it does is that it tracks revenue ex and expenses over a period of time, usually one year. Um, uh, for some people, uh, like if you have a rather large firm, uh, they'll have it for a period of like like quarterly. So they'll have like they'll ask for your quarterly earning statement. Um, so. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's the basic for, for, that's the timeline that they usually use either yearly or quarterly. Um, what the PL shows is how much it costs to run your business and how much it earns and how much it costs to provide goods and services. Uh, those are, like I said before, and a lot of it ho hopefully doesn't sound too repetitious, but um, there's, a, there's, an accounting pro, uh, there's, account, there's an accounting principle called matching. So essentially what it is, is if you earn revenue, you have to spend money in order to earn that revenue. So basically, uh, you know, in, in a nutshell, it costs money to make money, right? So, but if it costs you too much money to earn that revenue, well, your financial statements will tell you that. And that means you probably have to make certain adjustments in order to correct, to, rec uh, to rectify that situation. Um, after all, no one goes into business to lose money. It's, it's gonna happen in you know, the first three years, two or three years of a business, you're gonna lose money. But you never wanna be in a situation to where every time you make a sale, you use, you're losing money on the sale. That's never good. Uh, but if you have a good set of financial statements, uh, good, a good uh, profit and loss statement, it can tell you that rather quickly. Uh, so therefore you can make any necessary adjustments uh, as needed. And most importantly, what your earnings statement does or your PL does, it lets you know and it lets other people know, you know, banks, um, banks and investors, can you meet your current obligations as they come due? So, in a lot of ways, a business is like a household. It's going to have bills like employees, utilities, uh, supplies, cable and internet, telephone, and uh, also like loans, other loans and interest. And what your financial statements will do, particularly your PL, it will tell you it, it will tell the story as to whether you have the ability to meet those obligations as they come due. Um, that that's rather that, that's rather important, and we'll see why. Well, we all know why. Um, if uh, if you sell widgets, but you have to buy widgets, and the people you buy the widgets from, if they're not certain they're going to get their money from you, well, guess what? They may not sell you the widgets. So, um, so it's important, or if you have an internet-based business and you can't pay, pay your cable bill, well, 
that that is going to cause you a little bit of harm. Uh, well, actually, a lot of harm. I'm just being a uh, trying to be polite, but yeah. So, uh, so what you're finding the most important thing about your financial statements is uh, knowing whether you can actually meet your current obligations. Another big one is labor. Um, like if you know, imagine if you have an employee or two and they do the work, but you can't pay them. That's a serious problem. So just keeping up with your financial statements, um, it, it can let you know whether you need to add employees, whether you need to fire employees, whether you, whether you need to make adjustments over at, uh, for certain other services or goods so you can pay your employees or even how much you should pay your employees. So these are all things that business owners need uh, to make those decisions. That's, uh, that's the primary purpose or that should be the primary purpose of the financial statements. Um, let's, let me move on here. Uh, before I go to the next slide, does any is, is everyone clear on that? Um, anyone have any questions? Okay, no questions. All right, I ho hopefully you guys can see this. I tried to embed in this PowerPoint presentation just a, just a, an example of an income statement or P and L. Um, it's fairly simple. Um, but you, uh, the, at the top part of it, you're going to have your gross sales or your gross revenue, whether it's a service or, you know, uh, service or sales or even manufacturing. Uh, the revenue goes at the top. Uh, the expenses go right here. The, the sales figure is subtracted from the expenses figure, and it gives you your net income. That's the basics. That's the basics of it. Uh, so let's go through it a little bit. Gross sales. Cost of goods sold right here. What that is, is it tells you how much it costs you to sell those products. So let's say, hey, let's say you own a grocery store and you know you got to sell lettuce. You want to sell lettuce at that grocery store. Well, you have to buy the lettuce first, right? You know, unless you grow it yourself, you got to buy the lettuce. So that here, you purchasing the lettuce would go in this section right here called cost, cost of goods sold. So whenever you go to a retail outlet, just, you know, just realize like when you buy those shoes or you buy that food, well, they, you know, they, they had to purchase it first before they sell it to you. And it's, you know, just cost of goods sold. And once you subtract all your revenue from your cost of goods sold, that's what gives you your gross profit. So that number, you want that number to be positive. You want that be, to be a positive number. You want to make money. Uh, off of every sale, or you want to have a profit off of every sale. Uh, that's the that's the first that's the first hurdle, and then you have the, your other expenses that it, that you need when it comes to running the business, such as advertising, uh, uh, bank charges. Yeah, I can't forget the bank charges are always present, right? Can't can't avoid them. Uh, commission, tr contract labor, depreciation, insurance, um, uh, rent, uh, repairs. Uh, supplies. I'm not going to go over everything, but that's all the um, that's all the stuff that you know, and uh, when you're on the business, and the stuff that you have to think about that you do, you know, have to spend money on. Um, so, and after all that, you want that number after you have you, you know, you sold the pro, you know, you bought the lettuce, you sold the lettuce, your gross profit, and then you had to pay the grocery store person, you had to advertise in the local paper. And you had to pay rent for the space and had to make repairs to the grocery equipment. So after you spend all of that money, um, this number down here, you would ideally, you would want that to be this net income. You would want that to be a positive number. Um, uh, how big of a positive number is going to depend on your industry. Um, and, uh, I don't want to get into that um, unless you ask. But yeah, ideally, you would want to Make sure that's a positive number. And um, how can I put this? The net income number is a great number to look at. And it lets you know if you're covering your bills. But in a certain industry, um, you want to make sure that you're at least competitive with the other people in your industry. So that number in and of itself, it tells you a lot about your particular business. But you also should compare it to other businesses. Right. Um, like, you know, if let's say you own a grocery store and you make a million dollars a year, that sounds great. But what if most grocery stores make five million? Well, there's, you know, that are, let's say they're grocery stores that are your comparative size. 
and they do the same number of sales you do, but they're making five million and you're making four. Well, at that point, you need to ask yourself a few questions like, okay, I made money, but I'm not making as much money as them. Um, maybe I need to look at my costs or maybe I need to look at who I'm buying my lettuce from and because maybe the maybe the lettuce I'm buying is too high, you know, things of that nature. So, so, the, so these are just the basic questions that a financial, uh, that your financial statements and your PL will give you. Like I said, it's, it's really a decision-making tool that you should have and use at your disposal. Um, you shouldn't look at it as something you just have to do because the bank wants it. And it's, it's you know, okay, I'll do it if you want, you know, like kind of like someone's making you, eating your, making you eat your vegetables. Please don't look at it that way. It's, it's really something that, that you really need so, you, so that you can know how you're doing, all right? Does anyone have any questions ab about that? Anyone? Bueller, anyone? You guys too young for that, Bueller? Yeah, I guess, Ferris, Ferris Bueller day off, classroom. All right, uh, okay, the next one is the, uh, next one is the balance sheet. So the first financial statement is the balance sheet. The next, I mean, the, was the p &L. The next one is the balance sheet. So they go in a set of three. So these are the main, the three main ones you're gonna need. Um, the balance sheet shows you the position of your business at a point in time. So as sales, right? Sales go over the over the three month period or for the year period. So for uh, so so between January thirty January first and December thirty first, how did you do? Or between January first and March thirty first, how much did you sell? Right, that's what sales is, or the profit and loss. Uh, the balance sheet. It shows you your business at a certain point in time. It's like a snapshot. So like, for example, it's like, well, on December 31st, 2022, you had um, you had this much stuff and you owe this much stuff, right? For example, it will show how much you have and how much you owe as of a certain date. It's a snapshot of the business. That's all it is. Um, shows the position of the business at a point in time, not over time, but at a point in time, like it's, it's gonna be at a certain date. Um, so this is what a balance sheet is gonna look like. Um, it's gonna show you like the assets, like how much, can you guys see that? Barely, should I, let's see if I can enlarge it. All right, so it's gonna have your current assets like cash, your accounts receivable, uh, also like property, plant, and equipment. Um, so that's how much you, you know, those are your assets. Your liabilities are going to just be whatever you owe to someone. Like, you know, accounts payable, um, long-term debt, like a mortgages or a line of credit. And the equity section just says, like, how much of your own money did you put in or how much money came into the company that wasn't loans? Um, so, all right. So when I said like how much you have and how much you owe, I'm gonna break, we're gonna break it down right here. So the half part of the balance sheet is called the assets. And that's gonna be things such as cash, equipment, accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is when uh, someone makes a sale and they don't pay you right away. So you send them an invoice, that's a receivable. And property, supplies. So these items, like I said, are called assets. This is what you own or the business owns, or you as the owner owns. Um, and uh, what you owe, of course, is the loan part. You know, businesses, well, they get loans. They A lot of times they have to. Uh, so it's going to be an accounts payable. That's when you buy things on account. Uh, some businesses owe taxes. Um, or like there's a line of credit. So this is called, uh, so these items are called liabilities. So, so the difference between your assets and your liabilities is your net worth as a business. Can you guys see that? Now it's cut off right here. Let me see that. And so the difference between your assets, so if you to take your assets and subtract your liabilities, you get your equity or your net worth or your net assets. Um, is that understandable? Yeah, net assets um, or net worth. Uh, it's just like when you go for a home loan and they're asking you, well, what's your net worth? Well, basically, they're just asking you, well, how much do you have right now? How much cash do you have? How much of all the property you have? How much is that worth? And how much do you owe? Take those figures, subtract it, you know, 
And that's what they mean, net worth. So like when you're watching like uh, TMZ or something, and they said, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, Megan Thee Stallion, her net worth is, I don't know, a couple of million dollars. So essentially what they're saying is, um, you know, she might have like $10 million in the bank, but she owes somebody like $8 million. So you net those out, net, you know, make stallion is worth $2 million, I guess. I have no idea, but just an example. Uh, I'm an old man. I don't know these people now. I just whatever flashes across the screen. All right. Um, so hence we have a relationship between the balance sheet, which is going to be your assets, is going to equal your liabilities plus your equity. All right. So if you look at it, let's look at it, let's look at the relationship this way. Equity is what uh, comes in to the company either from the owners, and the owners could be you and other investors. Liabilities is what comes in through the company, and you know, cash or goods that comes in through the company through various lenders. If you add those two together, that money is supposed to go somewhere to do something. So it's supposed to go to buy these assets, so or to get assets. So some so so the money that flows in run those assets to cash, you might want to put some of that money in the bank and just hold it. And you might need to purchase, you know, merchandise so you can sell and you might need to uh, purchase equipment so you can actually run the business. So that is the relationship. So this is, so this side, right, this side right here is a way to finance the business. And this is a result, this asset, that's the result of the financing that you did. That, the, this assets, these are these are the decisions you make. This is the, this is the decision you make on how to get the money. This is assets is the decisions you make on how to spend it or invest it. Is that clear? All right. And then there's the third type. So we went over two types of financial statements. We went over the profit and loss. Wow, time is going fast, huh? We went over the profit and loss. Uh, we went over the balance sheet, and now we're going to go over the cash flows. Um, there's three types of cash flows that are in a business. There's operating. And the operating cash flow is the money that the cash, not necessarily the, you know, the sales, but the cash that you get from actually running the business. So like from the sales or from the services you provide. Uh, then there's the investing and there's how much cash that you the, that flows into or out of the business that comes from investing and comes from financing. So operating cash flows like an inflow, like I said, would be sales. Now, we all know that not every sale is with cash, right? Sometimes it can be on credit. So what does a business have to do? It has to hustle to make you pay that invoice so it can get their cash because you can't pay bills with an invoice, right? You know, you can't like call Cox Cable and say, hey, there's a couple of people that owe me money. Um, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you these invoices and, uh, and I'm going to let them pay you. No, it doesn't work like that, right? So so what the paying the cash flow does is it actually sees how much cash it, how much cash is going in and out of that company, and the reason why that's important is because, well, people want to know, well, can you pay your bills and can you pay your loans when they come due? Um, so like if you're ever looking at the night night uh, night uh, sorry nightly news, and they say, well, Microsoft earned you know forty billion dollars. That's fairly accurate. They earned forty billion dollars over the year. Well, 75% of that might just be credit sales. Only 10, and they might only got cash sales for like 10 billion. So, so, uh, so if you're an investor or a person like, or a supplier, you're gonna look at the sales figure because that's, that might be some predictor of what their cash is gonna look like, but it may not be because there may be some companies that have high sales, but their turnover of invoices is fairly low. So they have high sales, but they're like always short on cash, which is why they always, you know, sometimes they have to get lines of credit. They have to borrow any money from investors because they haven't converted those invoices or those sales into cash. Cash outflows would just be, of course, the money you spend, you know, in cash to buy the services, you know, such as pay your bills, buy the merchandise, pay the workers. How much cash is leaving the business for those, for those items? So, uh, uh, let me move on because I see time's getting kind of short. Uh, investing is like buying, buying and selling of long-term assets. So that would be your property, plant, and equipment, things such of that nature, or the piece of machinery, 
uh, that's going to make you the widgets that cost a lot of money. So that's a cash outflow that you need. So that's why it's called investing. It's a cash outflow that you need to make to or to actually uh, operate the business. And those are just a few examples or one example. Uh, financing is how the business, um, uh, basically it's how the business will get cash without sales, basically. So you, you, you know, there's loans. And for some people they're selling company stock, if you're, if you are a, um, a small business, so let's say you're one person, you wanna go and expand. So you get a group of partners together and they give you money to buy into your business and you take that money and you expand. Well, that's like, you know, selling the part of your business. That's all you're really doing. You know, you're selling the part of your business so you can get the money or the finances uh, to actually expand the business. Um, does anyone have any questions about that, that part? All right, I'm, I'm just doing these excellent, you know, explanations and everything, you know, it's all clear, crystal clear. All right, all right. Uh, okay, let me go back here. So those are the main reasons like that a business um, would use uh, to have financial statements for themselves. That's why you need it. So you can understand how your business is doing and how things, are, you know, how your cash is flowing. And if you need more or less assets and what you have in terms of assets. Uh, but, the, but of course, there's other people and I've alluded to it all throughout. There's other people that need your um, financial statements. These are you know, external actors. So there's gonna be investors, people that wanna invest in your business. Uh, um, banks, and, banks and lenders, they're gonna want your financial statements. And of course, you know, our, our government, they're gonna want some form of your financial statements. Um, they want them for all different reasons, but they do want them. Uh, investors are people or entities to seek to, to provide finances to businesses. Uh, and, and these investors, well, actually, they're looking for cash, right? Because they, they invest in you because they assume one day that you're going to make a profit and some of that profit you're going to give over to them since they're part owner. So that's when the person invests in you, that's, that's what they're looking for. So what most investors are going to pay more attention to, they're going to pay attention to everything, but they're going to look at the profit and loss and they're going to pay attention to the cash flow. Right? Profit and loss because you want to see how well the business is operating. Are you getting the right sales? You get the right amount of sales for, for your given industry. Statement of cash flows is, well, do you have the money to pay me? That's pretty obvious, right? Um, and they want to see how, how much money is flowing in and out. All right. Um, all right. Banks and lenders, the next group of people. And, and I did this in order of, import, of importance. So investors, like we, they're in the news a lot. And, you know, you watch the, you know, CNBC or, you know, whatever, Fox Business, whatever you watch. And they talk about, you know, Wall Street and yada, yada. Um, but that's not most people. Most people are going to get their financing through banks and lenders. Um, even, even major corporations, most of their financing doesn't come from the stock market. It comes through banks and lending. Um, so that's why when there's a banking crisis, people really panic because it's like, oh, how am I going to get my money? Because that's who provides most of the lend. That's who, that's who provides most of the financing. For even for major corporations. Um, so, um, so what a bank is going to look at, what they're going to look at is they're going to look at your profit and loss and cash flow to determine if you can actually, well, do what? Pay your interest and principal. Um, they also look at the balance sheet uh, to see what can be acquired through liquidation. And what I mean is, you know, they look at your collateral for a reason. Like, do we, you know, what if, if you can't make these loan payments, what do you have that we can sell to get our money back? Uh, so that's why they're going to look at your balance sheet. But as I say right here in the big bold print, and I, and I speak to a lot of bankers about this, uh, this is not optimal for the bank or for you. The bank would rather not have to go through the process of making you sell your home or making you sell your equipment just so they can get their money back. They would rather you pay them from your you know, regular operations and the profit and loss statement, and also the uh, uh, statement of cash flows. This is like the last resort. So, they, yeah, that's you know, unless it's like a shady banker, but most of them like just they do. I don't, I don't, I don't want your stuff. Just, just pay me the money. All right. So that's what banks are going to be looking at. They're going to be looking at your ability to make the payments as they come due. Um, and lastly, and probably the most important because it affects all of us is the uh, 
the government. The government, they want your financial statements if you're a business. Um, uh, yeah, they're going to want it to assess the amount of money that you have to pay them in taxes. Um, now, for a lot of people, you, well, a lot of, I'm going to be realistic. A lot of people aren't going to keep a P&L statement for the year. Um, but here's what the government said. Basically, the government, they're just going to mainly just want to know your profit and loss or your earnings and expense. And if you haven't made one, the, well, if you don't know what it looks like, the government makes one for you because, you know, they're always willing to help you pay them, right? So, um, and it's uh, depending on what type of business you have, it's going to be like a 1040. That's the regular personal return, but it's going to be on a Schedule C. Um, that's for like if you have a sole proprietor business. Uh, a 1040 Schedule E, that's going to be for um, if you have like, like a sorry, real estate or anything like that. So mainly real estate is going to be used for Schedule E and Schedule C is going to be used for like any other type of business. There are some other types. Um, these are the two of the most common, sole proprietor business or real estate. Those two are the most common, but those other other types, such as 1040 Schedule F, that's for farmers. Uh, there's not too many farmers hanging around these days. Um, I don't want to make assumptions, but I assume most people in this audience isn't, aren't farmers. So uh, we can kind of leave that out. Um, but here's what the Schedule C looks like. Uh, it kind of looks like a financial statement. Um, can you guys see that clearly? All right, let me increase the size right quick. Up the top here, just like the other financial statement, um, you have your revenues. Um, you have your gross sales and returns and allowances. Fairly easy. Uh, they make it easy for you. I mean, they want you to pay them, so they're going to make this part pretty easy. Um, so you have your gross sales uh, and, gross, and gross services that you render. That's the income you make from your business. And then down here in the Schedule C, Part 2, that's your expenses. Yeah, like a financial statement. So you have your advertising. You have your mileage, your car and truck expense. Um, you have your legal and professional. So if you have to pay a lawyer or someone like me, a CPA, to do your taxes, that's deductible. Uh, if you own the property, if you own the business property, but you have a loan on it, you know, you get to deduct your interests and there's, you know, office expense, you know, such as paper and printer and things of that nature. Uh, travel and meals. Um, this one here, the government only gives you half off of travel and meals because they assume you're lying for half those traveling meals. So for every business lunch that you that you get, they assume that the next lunch you have is to take your kids to McDonald's. So, so, basically, so that's why they only count half of traveling meals because they assume that you're lying. So half for, for half of it. So, uh, <laughs> and most people probably are. So yeah, that's probably right. And then there's actual travel that you use uh, to for your business. So, uh, so once you have all your expenses is tallied up, well, right here goes to total expenses and that gets subtracted from your total revenue up here. And you have your gross profit from the business and that goes on the like, uh, like, like line, like line 10 of the 1040. It goes on that you know, personal, goes on your personal, uh, goes on the front page of your 1040. So it, it just flows from one part of the 1040 to the other. And basically it's the same thing. If you have rental property, your rents are up in, uh, in this section and you have basically the same expenses, um, you know, advertising, auto, you know, repairs, utilities, then it gets netted out with the rents that you actually receive. Um, then you, then it gets the net down here and that goes to the front page of the 1040 to figure up your total income. Um, the reason why you would probably use a Schedule E as opposed to a uh, Schedule C, uh, if you can. I've seen some people use Schedule C for real estate, but if you use Schedule C for real estate, essentially, uh, that's going to give you self-employment tax, where as a Schedule E, it won't give you self-employment tax. So, um, so actually, that is, um, that's the down and dirty of financial statements. Um, it, was, it was fairly quick. I understand that. Um, yeah, kind of ran through fairly fast, but, um, so right now I'm going to open it up to any questions that anyone might have.
So everyone, everyone understood everything? I have a question. Um, okay. What are the best practices for accounting? Like what way do, should I keep uh, my accounting? How should I track my accounting? So like, should I use QuickBooks, Excel? Um, can you kind of speak onto that? Okay. Um, I'm gonna say it really, it really depends on how much money that you're actually willing to spend. Um, I would say the best practice, the best is to have a bookkeeper that takes care of it for you. Uh, there's quite a few of them around and they vary in range and price, uh, but make sure the person is trustworthy and diligent. Um, I would say that's the best. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a little bit nervous about saying QuickBooks because a lot of people, um, a lot of people use QuickBooks, um, but there's a difference between understanding how to use the program and understanding accounting. So what could happen, what sometimes would happen with QuickBooks with non-accountants are, is that, well, you kind of you kind of mess up your own numbers because you don't really know where to put stuff. Um, so, so I would say, unless you have some background in accounting, I would, I would encourage people like to really not use QuickBooks. That's just my opinion. If you're gonna get QuickBooks, you, you either have, a, you know, you need to have a couple of accounting classes and really kind of just know what those numbers are supposed to look like at the end of the day. Um, uh, as for a couple of down and dirty methods, um, I would probably say like a Excel spreadsheet works just fine. Um, like just taking your receipts and just categorizing them according to the schedule C or the schedule schedule E and just adding those receipts up and putting them in an Excel spreadsheet. That works just, that works very well. Only thing is you have to be very diligent and, you know, willing to do it. Um, but that's, um, that's usually the hardest part of any type of accounting is the willingness to do it, but it's fairly simple. But I would say, um, Categorizing uh, an Excel spreadsheet along the same lines as a Schedule C and Schedule E, and just add telling up your expense expenses over and uh, income of a certain period of time. Thank you, thank you for answering that question. Anyone else um, of the participants, business owners, entrepreneurs, have any more questions um, for Joel? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Joel, how can they get in contact with you uh, if you're look if uh, business owners are looking for uh, accounting services? Uh, well, uh, you can um, well you can call my number, which is uh, 405-596-3620. Um, you can also email me at JP Accounting and yeah, JP Accounting at Cox.net. Fairly simple. My name is Joel Pendarvis, so just JP Accounting at Cox.net. And I also do have a website. It's called JP, uh, jpaccountservices.com. Um, we're, we're very Googleable, so you can reach, reach me uh, through those three methods. I'm actually located in Oklahoma City on the Northwest side, um, right by Bishop McGinnis High School. I'm on the Northwest 55th and Western and uh, one Western Plaza. I'm in Suite 144. So it's a fairly easy location to find if you just, in my opinion, it's a fairly easy location to find if you just wanna just pop by. Well, thank you, Joel. I do have a couple of announcements for our viewers. Um, so the American Rescue Plan, or also known as OKC Rescue Programs, are now live. Um, the programs are um, technical assistance. So you are looking for marketing, you're looking for an accountant, or you're looking um, for support um, for business development or strategies. Um, also, as well as the facade and storefront improvements, uh, re reimbursement for um, any projects for that, as well as pandemic mitigation. Um, you can get reimbursements up, uh, for that as well, up to 25,000 for the facade and storefront improvements and pandemic mitigation. And then for technical assistance, you can get up to $15,000 in services. Um, you can go to the website, www.okcrescueprogram.com. If you need help or assistance with um, the application, you can contact Progress OKC or you can contact me at Daisy Munoz, daisy.munozprogressokc.org or at 405-837-5180. Um, 
these programs uh, are really great and they can help support um, your uh, endeavors. And so um, if you need assistance, please message us. Other than that, thank you, Joel, again, for your time and for teaching us about small business accounting. Numbers are not that fun, but um, they are needed uh, to make and to make sure that you know your business is viable and sustainable. So please take um, advantage of these resources. Um, thank you, everyone, again for joining us, and uh, have a great Friday. Thank you.